Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. Today, you join me with this week's car, which is none other than the BMW 2 Series. Let's get around this car, let's get underneath the bonnet and get out on the road and give you an evaluation on what we think of this stunning looking car. Let's start with these 19 inch alloys. They're beautiful. The low profile on them is absolutely stunning. And also the fact that this is the M Sport trim level. We'll talk trim levels in a little bit, but with that, you get that lovely blue caliper in there as well, which just slightly offsets the coloring on this, I think. Then moving swiftly around here at the front, you get these stunning LED laser lights. They're those follow me home ones. But look at the running light, the way it wraps around the actual headlight itself. The design and the thought that's gone into that is exceptional. I love all the angles on this car as well. And look at the bonnet, the way it's cut, it sort of sweeps around and it just all maneuvers itself into one amazing frontage on this car. I'll come around here because you've got these vents down here which are channeling that air through straight over that tire and keeping that Brembo brake disc nice and cool. Then you've got the fog light down here which is just tucked away nicely as well. And if I couldn't get any more enthusiastic, we finished with this beautiful black kidney shaped grille here, which is just absolutely iconic to this car. BMW build cars for petrol heads, for people who love their motoring. And the BMW 2 Series is just no exception. Okay, let's take a look under the bonnet and the various different engine options. Now the bonnet release catch, if you're here in the UK, is on the driver's side. Obviously, BMW are not gonna swap it around just because you're overseas. So it'll be on the passenger side if you're somewhere else in the world. Um, double pump, and the reason for that is it's a BMW. There is no bonnet release catch. So don't spend half an hour looking for it when you've only pulled it once. Might be mentioning that for a reason. Um, gas struts on this bonnet. Absolutely lovely, simple, lift it up, check it out. How neat and tidy is that? Okay, engine variants. So the entry level is a 218i, and that is a 1.5 litre, three cylinder engine, develops around about 136 brake horsepower. It's the same engine that the, they use in the Mini, the BMW Mini. Um, there is a diesel variant of that, which is a two litre diesel, and that one is around about 150 brake horsepower. So that's the 218D. You then jump up to this particular engine. This is a 220D. Again, it's a diesel engine. It's the four cylinder two litre. And this one develops about 190 brake horsepower. If you really want to go all singing and dancing though, my choice out of all of these would be the next one up, which is the M235i. It's a four cylinder two litre petrol engine. And check this out. 304 brake horsepower and it's X drive because all of these are front wheel drive until you get to that particular model and then you get the X drive which is all wheel drive as well. Couple that up to either a six speed manual or an eight speed auto and there you have it. That's your engine options. Okay, before we check out in the boot itself and have a look round the back, look at the lines on this car. I mean, someone has spent hours actually designing it and taking their time to make this look like the GT that it really is. This is a grand tour. You can tell through and through just by the shape of it, the way, yeah, it's just stunning. Look at the side skirts on it. You've got these lovely mirrors. They're foldy any mirrors as well. So when you, when you lock it up, they fold in. That protects it when it's parked up as well. But look at these superb lines and the way everything sort of flows all the way around to the back here. Really, really nice. I love the fact this is all tinted as well at the back and you've got this sort of matching black surrounds that run around it. It's just so nice. Um, you've got your DAB radio on the top there. You've got a floating rear screen. I call it a floating rear screen because there's no rubbers anymore, which is really nice because it means the water doesn't sit in that rubber and then rot away and rust all around there. And nowadays, this is quite a common thing to see. But I love this, this big screen on the back here, really nice. Again, nice dark tint as well. So moving around, the LEDs, look at the shape of them, the way they sort of wrap themselves around. They're almost like hugging the back of the car. And then you've got the vent here, allowing that air to escape off this very hot rear wheel when it's been on a motorway or been pushing itself through some of the back roads. Allows that to escape through there. You've got these massive black twin tailpipes. They're real as well, one either side. How nice are those? And I like this, this sort of like aerodynamic little bit at the bottom here. Um, one thing I would change perhaps, I love this, this actual aero piece here, but I might have that picked out in black as well. Give it that little bit more sporty look. It's 
an individual choice. I'm sure you could get that done as well. So all in all, looking at the back, really nice, just like the front. Let's take a look inside. So it's a little clip there, very easy to open. German engineering, superb, the way that just swung, you know, just sort of works on a, like a cantilever, really nice. Over 400 litres of boot space in here. But let's be honest, what is this car going to be used for? It's, it's a bit of an A to B car, distance. You might be going to play someone you know, lives, play golf with someone, you know, a couple of sets of golf clubs in there. You and perhaps the missus and your bags in the back there, you're going to have plenty of space in here. Or you might just be on a nice afternoon out and you're going to take a few bits and pieces with you, set up dinner on the beach or something like that. This is perfect for that. However, you don't want to be dinging one of your wheels because you only get a puncture repair kit with one of these. You know, that gunky rubbish that they put and you pour it in your tyre and you ruin your tyre and then you realise that you've actually mashed the wheel and it's not actually the tyre so you can't pump it up. Yeah, it's a complete waste of space. I think, unfortunately, with this car, there isn't a space saver option. So you're going to end up with that whether you like it or not. The only thing you do get under here is another place to store bits and pieces. But I can't see the necessity in that. I'd much rather have the space saver option in here, that space saver wheel. All in all, it's a really nice back to this car. What we need to do now is jump in the back and see what it's like for the passengers. Okay, before we jump in the back and see what it's like for the passengers, I just want to show you something. So we lift up the, uh, the boot once again. Just underneath here, either side, is a little catch, and that will allow you to drop the rear passenger seats. Come and have a look, because it's a really novel idea. So the first thing you're going to notice, by the way, check it out. Look at this lovely orange trim on this car. If someone had said to me, I'm going to put orange trim in a car, I'd have oh no, but when you actually see this, it's just beautiful on this car. It just so goes with the whole colouring. Anyway, neither here nor there. Let's drop this seat down. So it's a 60-40 split. So you've got that one there. And if I step back a bit, I'll show you how easy it is to pull this one down here. Just pull that back there like that. Now you've almost, well, you've doubled your load space here and they're almost flat as well. It's really neat. And what you will notice, see the seat belts either side, they don't get hindered, they don't get caught. Again, it's all lovely engineered the way it should be. And that clicks back nicely there. See, seatbelt's not caught, it's not hidden or anything like that that you get on other cheaper cars. And that one can drop right back in there, which again is lovely. In the center, there is a center piece like that and it's got double cup holder. How cool is that? But what I really like is what you can do, there's a little catch here. You don't need to go around the back. So if you need to put the skis in here, you can just drop that down like that. Not only does it act as another armrest if you want it to, but now you can get your skis all the way through there. It's perfect, isn't it? Obviously, if you're in the UK, it'd be, yes, we can get your two by one, two meter piece of wood all the way through down at your local hardware store. Yes, us English do like a DIY project, don't we? Okay, so we'll bung that back up there like that. You've seen that. I'm gonna jump in and show you because it's quite difficult to get in and out of this car. And the reason for that is it's that low sloping roof. So I've had to duck to get in it. So unfortunately, if you're suffering for a little bit of arthritis or something like that, you're gonna struggle. So I don't think Granny's gonna be in the back here that often. Um, neither will you get three adults across here. Let's face it, this is designed for two adults or a couple of kids. Um, kids in mind, you've got Isofix points here and they're the ones with the flappy covers. So you're not gonna lose those and you're not gonna end up having to spend when you sell this car, I'll hand it back to the lease company for new flaps there, um, which is good. Again, um, indented uh, seat belt covers, uh, seat belts, sorry, seat belt covers, seat belts, which means when you slide your bum across like that, you won't get caught on them in your belt and you won't end up looking stupid getting caught and not being able to move anywhere. Um, transmission tunnel, not that big, but it's there. So you do have to sort of maneuver your feet over like that and sitting in the middle, well, you could get away with it, just about. Um, I think for a short journey, you'd be fine, but you wouldn't get another two adults either side. You end up hitting your head here, look, because you can see how far in that comes. It's quite thick up there as well. Uh, in the centre, we have, it's not independent heating. It is manoeuvrable separate heating. You can turn it on and off and you can move it from side to side. Down the bottom there, you've got two USB-C adapters. Now you will need one of those uh, cables, a different type of cable. It's an adapter cable uh, for your normal sort of iPad and iPhone. 
eventually everyone will have this new USB-C. But for the moment, don't forget your adapter. Love the way these seats have been designed to give you that extra bit of leg room. Now this seat, we have purposely pushed it as far back as it would go. And even now with my feet, with, with my knees in there like that, there's plenty of room. Um, and you've got plenty of room underneath the seat for your feet. One other thing I noticed here, um, on the front seat here, as she has isofix points there as well, which is a major plus point if you're a, a parent that wants to have their child up front with them while you're driving. Really good. Don't forget to turn the airbag off though. It's very, very important. All in all in the back here, it's a really nice place to be. A little bit low on the headroom, but you expect that because of the shape of this car. You get a nice double LED courtesy light up there. And uh, yeah, let's go and check it out up front for the driver. Okay, let's see what it's like up front for the driver. Before I jump in, this particular trim level, which is the M Sport trim level, comes with lovely electric seats and they're really good for adjusting. Let's jump in, see, see what it's like for the driver. There we go. Wow, what a great driving position. It's really nice and low slung, but you can see right down over that bonnet, lovely big wide windscreen on this car as well. Really nice, I love the whole setup. I'm gonna pull this door slightly shut so you can see the way everything sort of forms its way around. Now, the two series is exactly the same as the one series. So the actual interior is all the same, which is great. So we can talk about both in one go, if you like. One thing I wanna mention, and I'm gonna try and get a little bit, and I don't know whether it'll show up well, but at night, some of this lights up with like the same color as these seats. And I will keep saying these seats are superb. I love the coloring on this. So matches everything in this car. Um, and th that little orange starts to show up in here. It's like a scrolly bit and it's, it's all the way around the doors as well. Try and get a little bit of that for you at night and throw that in while we were talking there. Um, okay, so we'll start literally on the right hand side. It's as easy as, it's a keyless operation. Um, I've already pushed the, if you want to start the engine, obviously you just put your foot on the, acceler on the uh, brake there, not on the accelerator and it beeps for you and it lets you know and then you just push the button and the engine will start. Perfect. On the steering wheel, okay. Um, on this, it's not electronic adjustment, but you have got a stack load of adjustment. Look at that, it's just perfect. And the good thing about this steering, once you've got it set, you just lock it in like that, as you know, but this whole center of the wheel, you can see right through to that amazing digital instrument cluster, which this car gets, and it really is stunning. I think it's one of the best instrument clusters on the market. I like the Audi one as well. The Audi one is really good. You can actually have your map in the middle there as well, and then you have everything. You can set it all up yourself using the different you know, bits and pieces that you can get over here, I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so we said we're gonna start from the right over here. You've got your lighting section here, so you can set it up, put the auto lights on, or you can actually do them manually. You can just lower down the luminosity inside here. Um, on the steering wheel, got flappy paddles, need flappy paddles on a car like this, because if you want to have a bit of fun in manual mode, you just click it over and go into manual mode. Really nice, love playing around with that. And that diesel engine isn't too bad in this car. Um, on the right hand side here, we've got the telephone system. So you just push that and that's your telephone. You've got a left and a right for your scroll and then you've got an early button in the middle and you've got a volume control on the top. And then you've got a menu down the bottom and your Hey Siri button on the right there. It's like a microphone. You can talk to, it's not Siri, whatever it is works for BMW. You talk to that and tell it what you want it to do. Um, on the left hand side here, well this is where your um, cruise control is and your distance limiter and your speed limiter and everything is all set on there. Again, very easy, just press set, resume, cancel, it's all on there, and to actually operate it, there's a button in the middle there. So once you push that, it will come up on the screen, and then you can set up and down using that little button. Lovely. Heated steering wheel on this car, really nice. Um, again, got the M Sport badge on there. So all the different trim levels, you get a different badge there as to what, you know, what that trim level is, it's on your steering wheel. And I really do like this steering wheel, it's got a proper feel to it, proper sporty steering wheel. Um, indicate, uh, sorry, uh, the wipers on the right there with an auto switch button as well. Very simple to use again. And on the left here is your control for your computer. Now it says BC on the top there. If you push that in, that will bring up your computer on there and it gives the, the mileage, your average fuel consumption, distance to go and all bits and pieces like that. Again, just push the button, very simple and easy to use. Speaking of buttons, there are plenty of buttons along here. These you can actually pre-program and preset to whatever you want. So if you want it to suddenly show up what the weather's gonna be like, you can have that set to preset button four and so on. You only get really one knob in this car um, and not what you're thinking. No, that one, 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's your volume knob. Because you know I love a knob. I really do love a decent knob. And the problem is in this car, there aren't that many. Um, and the reason I like knobs is because when I get in the car and I've got my gloves on, I don't want to be taking my gloves off to adjust the temperature in here, which I can't do because it hasn't got any knobs. And I want to be able to do other bits and pieces. I mean, there is a decent sized knob down there. And we'll talk about that in a second, but I like a few more knobs, especially on the heating panel. So I can set that up before I take my gloves off. Um, on here, everything here is digital. So you've got your heated front seats there, and then you can pull up your heating system here. It's very simple. It all there, it just popped up. There you go, it's on auto. And again, simple to use. It's just, it's not like knobs, and I do like a decent knob. So we'll turn the heated seat off before I get, oh, really too hot. When you get a hot bum, you don't want to be sat in here either. Um, big screen, I like that. It's lovely the way it's set, and it is one of those really nice high definition screens. BMW have nailed it when it comes to the infotainment systems on these cars. It's just like, it's been so many years. Look at the scroll. This is using that big scroll button down here. It's a bit like a mouse, but when you've learned, to, well, it doesn't take long to learn to use it, but when you start using it, you'll find at the front here, you can sort of memorize in your head that the middle button using this finger is the home button, which takes you there. And then you can scroll across to where you want, select what you want. Look at that, it's so quick. Uh, left hand button, is in media, so you've got DAB radio on this, you've got your Apple Play, you've even got Android mirroring on this car. Yay, go BMW! They finally accepted that a certain amount of the population do have Android phones. Shame, but never mind, we had to let them in sooner or later. Um, and then obviously you've got Bluetooth as well, and that will all run wirelessly and straight through onto that screen as well, which is fantastic. And on the right, you've got the map, but look at how fast everything moves. The, the processor on this is superb, it's so quick. And then obviously scrolling about on your map, you can scroll, move in, you can move out. Look how quick it is, it's crazy. And at the same time, you know, there are, you know, you can use it as a touch screen as well. Put in where your local petrol stations are, for example. Anyway, let's go back to the home screen. Shows you how quick that is. Moving swiftly on. Well, before we go down the center there, I just want to show you the glove box. So it's very easy to lift over, but this is my second little rant of the day, handbooks. Manufacturers, get rid of these. They cost too much money, they take up too much space. You can give us other bits and pieces for nothing, just for the sake of throwing those away. We do everything online now, we don't need them anymore. Look, put it in there, look at the space that's taken up. I could get an extra packet of tissues in there, come on. Right, centre section here. On this particular model of trim, you get a wireless charger there put your phone in there and it just tucks in. It's got like a little cushion, rubbery cushion behind there. It just sits in there really nicely. Failing that, you have got another USB there which you can plug into and there's a 12 volt adapter there. This used to be a cigarette light. I don't know why I showed you that <laughs> back in the day. It was a <laughs> lovely. Nowadays, you just plug your bits and pieces in there. Got a double cup holder in the front here. I have tested this. It's really good. You can get a decent sized cup in there. So fair play for that. Not over keen on this tiny little knob here. This little sort of, well, it's not even a knob really. It's just like a, it is the gear. This is the eight speed gearbox on this one. Um, and then back here, you've got a nice little cubby. It's not massive, but you can get a decent size phone in there. And there is another USB point in there as well. USB-C all the way through here. What I have noticed, we've got quite a bit of this piano black here. I'm a little bit worried this could get scratched up. Uh, mode buttons down here. So you've got sport, you've got comfort, and then you've got the Eco Pro buttons. Now each one of these, when you push these, you can actually set them individually and you can configure them individually, apart from the Eco Pro, which when you go into Eco Pro, you've got to set it up in the standard. Once you go into the configure, there you go, it's all come up now. You can see you can actually set this up how you like to drive this car. Each one of those, really good. It's the comfort mode. You can only get the standard in the comfort mode. You can't actually set that yourself. But there again, it's comfort mode, so why would you want to? A um, couple of other bits, you've got to put the, you can turn your parking on and off, and then you've got your uh, stall button there when you pull up the lights and it auto stalls, so you can turn that on and off as well. And obviously the traction control there, which you don't really want to turn that off, not, not unless you're having a bit of fun off-road, which I doubt you'll be doing in this car. All in all, what a lovely place to sit. And I mean, you just, you got so expect this from BMW. It is built for a guy who like, or a lady or whatever, to drive these cars. That's what it's built for. So on that note, let's get out and drive this car because I can't wait. Let's see what it's like out on the road. Here we are guys, finally. 
we're out on the road in the 2 Series. And this isn't just any old 2 Series, this is the Grand Coupe. And what a car it is. You probably noticed that when we were talking about the car earlier, because there is a coupe and there is also a convertible. So there's a number of different models, but we're in the Grand Coupe. Um, trim levels on the Grand Coupe. Let's talk trim levels because very easy. There are only two. There's the Sport and there's the M Sport, which is what this one is. Now, in addition to those, you can add different packs. So there's, when I mean a pack, like up, upgrades, bits and pieces, nice little bits and pieces. So there is a comfort pack, which can add bits and pieces. You can check this with your dealer when you go down for a test drive. There is a tech pack. You get things like, uh, I've got head up display. That's part of the tech pack. Um, check it all out with your dealer when you go down there for a test drive. On the coupe, there is the additional entry level of an SE model. Again, have a chat with the dealer. He'll explain the differences between all those different models as well. Uh, Price-wise, well, on the Grand Coupe, they start from around 27,000 UK pounds, which I think is an exceptional value for money level, entry level car to get into the BMW range as well, especially as a brand new car. I mean, if you want to go the all singing and all dancing 235i that we spoke about, the 304 brake horsepower, top of the range engine, top of the range gearbox, all that, you are talking around 41,000 UK pounds. That's for everything. So we've got a range of 27,000 to 41,000. If you go for the coupe, again, slightly cheaper. You can go in on that SE um, entry level for around 23,500 UK pounds. Personally, I think 27,000 for a car like this is a very good price indeed. Now, what does that 27 grand actually get you? What, what is your bang for your buck in this car? Well, first of all, it's the pedigree, it's the breeding, it's, it's a BMW at the end of the day, and this is a Grand Tourer. So if you're gonna do a few nice journeys every now and then, you're gonna pop away, you're gonna do a few hundred, you're gonna get in this car, you're gonna drive two, 300 miles, you're gonna get out the other end, and you're gonna feel as good as the second you got in this car, and there's gonna be more smiles on your face than there ever has been before, because it is a fun car to drive. As much as it is a, a plodder, as I call it, once it gets on the motorway, the autobahn, the freeway, whatever you call it, it's a plodder, it just keeps going. And you could sit at 100 miles an hour for five hours and it wouldn't change because that is the beauty of the 220 diesel engine. That's what it was designed and the Grand Coupe for the comfort level. But above all, what you get with the BMW is the breeding. It's that race instilled pedigree that BMW have worked on for years and won so many championships and you know, just got to look at the, the actual history of BMW and you'll see that every, all these cars come from that stable, that original stable of racing and cars that race. You can see, by the way, I'm sitting, just the, the driving position when you get in a BMW. It's, it's built for a driver, people who love to drive their cars. And to be honest, this one is just no exception. Um, the, you know, even with the diesel engine, I was, I was really put off with the diesel. I said, oh, no, no, I definitely want a petrol engine, but it's so quiet. It, it just lacks that little bit of grunt that you get with a petrol engine. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's just not got that sort of sparkle there, but at the end of the day, look, we're getting 30, 35.6 miles to the gallon around town in a two, on a two litre engine. It was incredible. Um, and then I know we had it up early when we were doing some of the, uh, the road, you know, the, the combined fuel statistic, 44, roughly 45 to the gallon. It's not bad for a two litre car. There's bags of space in the back for your passengers. It's comfortable. Got tons of safety aids. You've got the lane keeper. You've got the cruise control. Um, add in those tech packs for that heads up display and things like that. You know, you really are talking a really good car for the money, I think. Um, all in, well, it's just definitely you should get down to the dealer. That's my personal opinion. Go down to the dealer and have a test drive. Try the coupe. Uh, try the grand coupe, the grand coupe. I love saying it like that. And if you really want to go silly, take a convertible out. Why not? Um, the interior of this, like I say, very well, it's identical to the, the One Series. Um, we'll be reviewing the One Series in a few weeks' time. So I'm looking forward to that as well. It's going to be interesting, the differences and how it behaves. But I think this car is definitely, it's, it's you know, one for those nice long journeys. And it's such a good looking car, especially with this orange interior as well. I've waffled enough. You've been watching me, AJ the Player. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget like, subscribe, and comment. If you're gonna comment, 
I don't mind if, you, if you've got, you know, an, a comment, you question, you want to question it. There's plenty of people that now view this channel and, and will reply back to you if I don't. So if it's a technical question, bang it in the comment box down below. If you want to see more like this, then don't forget, subscribe. It's as easy as that. And leave that little bell sign unchecked. And don't forget, we don't just do cars. We do boats, we do helicopters, we do, you know, interviews, all sorts of things. It's not just, you know, a one-trick pony, as they say. So, uh, yeah, just leave the bell sign unchecked and you'll get regular updates on that as well. The reason we're not just a one-trick pony is because we're part of a much bigger organisation. We're part of the Player Group. Now, the Player is a magazine for guys. And no, 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 not what you're thinking, I wish. Um, it's a magazine for guys. It's a guy's lifestyle magazine. So it's... I say it's a bookazine actually. So a, a bookazine is a magazine with a hard back cover that comes out on a regular basis. Like our one comes out every three months. And it's called The Player. And it's just chock full of 200 pages of what us guys love. Cars, boats, you know, holidays, golf, wine, food, interviews. Everything's in there. Now, I'm not trying to sell it because what I actually want to do is give it to you for free because you watch me on AJ, the player YouTube channel, you can have it for nothing. And all you've got to do is head over to www.theplayer.co.uk. That's coming up down there now. There you are. It will stay up for 10 seconds for those of you a little bit slow. There you go, down the bottom there. Um, go there. I don't look like a data capture person, do I? No, because I'm not. So just put your name in and your email address and you can either download it every three months or you can view it online. There's a little thing you can do it with your finger or you can do it with a mouse, whatever, whichever. And you can look at all the pages, read all the interviews and the articles and all stuff like that. And although I'm a little bit biased, I think it's a great read. I mean, we've got some incredible journalists that write. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's free, guys. Get over there. Enjoy it. Fill your boots. Like I say, you've been watching me, AJ the Player. Thank you very much for watching. I will catch you next week with something different. Who knows what it'll be? If you leave the bell sign unchecked, we'll notify you. Catch you next week, guys. Safe driving. Be careful out there. And above all, enjoy your life.